Israeli security and military commanders criticize Prime Minister Netanyahu, accusing him of misleading the Israeli people on important policy issues. Is there a rift between the Prime Minister and the security establishment? And how might it affect his chances of re-election? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Tamor Navili. Now, the former head of Israel's domestic intelligence agency, Shin Bet, has become the latest member of Israel's security establishment to openly criticize the country's prime minister. Yuval Diskin said Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and the defense minister Ehud Barak should not be trusted to lead policy on Iran and that attacking the Islamic Republic might actually accelerate Iran's nuclear program. Well, Diskin is not alone in his opposition to his prime minister. Israel's military chief of staff, Lieutenant General Benny Gantz, has said that he doesn't think that Iran has yet made a decision to build nuclear weapons. And the former head of Israel's foreign intelligence service, Mossad, has called the idea of military action against Iran the stupidest idea he's ever heard. And there are many more current and former high-level members of the security and military establishment who've been making similar comments. Nonetheless, the Prime Minister continues to stick to his hard line. On April the 18th, Netanyahu repeated his claims against Iran. The truth is that a nuclear-armed Iran is an existential threat to the state of Israel. The truth is that a nuclear Iran is also a potential threat to other countries in the region and a serious threat to world peace. And the truth is that it is necessary to prevent Iran from acquiring nuclear weapons. It's the duty of the world, but first of all, it's our duty. Well, let me just quote to you what Israel's uh, Lieutenant General Benny Gantz said about Iran's nuclear ambition, comments that contradicted those of Netanyahu. Gantz said, Iran is going step by step to the place where it will be able to decide whether to manufacture a nuclear bomb. It hasn't yet decided whether to go that extra mile. Well, Gantz also added he believes the Iranian leadership is composed of very rational people who would not take the risk of building a nuclear weapon. So here's Israeli public opinion turning against Benjamin Netanyahu. To consider this question, I'm joined by three guests. In Tel Aviv, Naftali Bennett was the chief of staff for Benjamin Netanyahu between 2006 and 2008. Also in Tel Aviv, Daniel Ben Simon is a member of the Knesset from the Labour Party. And joining from Beirut, Rami Khouri is director of the Issam Fares Institute for Public Policy and International Affairs at the American University of Beirut. Gentlemen, thank you all very much for being with us. Um, let me begin with you, Mr. Bennett, if I could, and quote to you uh, the words of uh, Yuval Diskin. I don't believe in either the prime minister or the defense minister. I don't believe in a leadership that makes decisions based on messianic feelings. Those are strong words, aren't they? They are. The Israeli public overwhelmingly supports Netanyahu. He's one of the most stable leaders I'm asking leaders you about, of the words of, fact, about, uh, about the words of Yuval Diskin, not the Israeli public. And, if you, uh, and I'm... Uh, uh, and I'm saying that his words uh, represent his own opinion, but what I'm saying is that the Israeli public overwhelmingly supports Netanyahu's policies, and history teaches us that the supreme leader is the elected leader, not uh, more junior officials. So with all due respect to Diskin's words, the public uh, stands very strongly behind Netanyahu on whatever decision he might make vis-a-vis -vis Iran. Daniel uh, Ben-Simon, can... Uh, Yuval Diskin be dismissed quite so glibly? Oh, not at all, not at all. <clears throat> this guy was closer to this gentleman, Prime Minister and Defence Minister, more than anybody else, and he was really uh, the guy who knew everything. He was there until a year ago. You cannot dismiss any word he said, and I think the headlines today in the Israeli press uh, show a division among decision makers as to the uh, Iranian policy. Should Israel attack or should uh, Israel restrain from attacking? And when you hear, I'm s speaking not just as a member of parliament, but as an Israeli citizen who reads the paper, who heard Mr. Diskin, who heard the former chief of the Mossad, Mr. Dagan, who heard the former chief of staff, Mr. Ashkenazi, 
you know, there is doubt among Israelis. What is the best way to deal with Iran? And what we heard yesterday adds doubt, not just about the policy uh, of Iran, but about Mr. Netanyahu's capacity to, le to lead this country. And I believe, uh, 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 unlike what I heard just now, that Mr. Netanyahu, as my view as a former journalist and the current politician, he will not be the next Prime Minister of Israel. Well, just to, to follow up on that, I mean, uh, Mr. Bennett believes that he has the support of the public. Do you think he can retain the support of the public when so many high-level um, former and current members of the security establishment are turning around and openly criticizing his ability to conduct these operations? Well, not just about the Iranian policy or the vis-a-vis -vis the Palestinians. We're talking about the whole policy of a prime minister. It seems to me that the Israelis want something else. And today, in the polls today, Netanyahu is still the most popular politician. But I was there in 99. I was there in other places when prime ministers were extremely popular. And then suddenly it fades away. And it seems to me the Israeli mood today is to try to change, to go for more social justice, to go for, for, for things that are positive. And I think that Netanyahu's view, Netanyahu's uh, uh, ideology does not go along with the mood of the Israelis. Okay. I might be wrong, but I might be right also. Well, let me, let me uh, ask you again, uh, Naftali Bennett. I mean, he may be popular in the opinion polls right now, but when Benjamin Netanyahu has staked almost his entire political position on this idea that Iran is an existential threat to Israel, when his security establishment in their entirety almost turns around and says, well, you're not the man to protect us from such a threat, how can he survive? Well, you know, uh, the ultimate responsibility lies on the prime minister, not on ex-officials. Um, Israel's history is filled with ex-officials that criticize leaders. You know, when Menachem Begin and went out to officials. attack the Iraqi nuclear, the Iraqi nuclear uh, generator in uh, Osirak in Baghdad, he was criticized by Shimon Peres, the current president, uh, leaders of the military, of the intelligence, all. Uh, very fiercely criticized the potential move. He did it, and today the whole world praises Netanyahu for doing that. So it praises Begin for doing that. In fact, he saved the world from a terrible nightmare of a Saddam Hussein with a nuclear weapon. So I, I'm not uh, too uh, concerned with what ex-officials say. What we, I also want to point out is Daniel Ben Simon, my uh, colleague here, represents barely 5% of the uh, public. His party represents 5% of the Israeli public. The prime minister is Netanyahu. He's got a solid majority, uh, and I can uh, attest personally to his motives. He is dedicated to Israel's security. He will only do the right thing vis-a-vis -vis Iran, whether, uh, whatever he decides. Let me bring in Rami Khouri here. Rami, we, we've, got, uh, uh, we've got the Israeli establishment criticizing itself and engaging in what seems to be an increasingly bitter battle of words. We have on this program two politicians beginning to, to conflict with each other really uh, quite violently, as we heard there. Uh, how do you think this is being viewed outside of Israel? Well, I think the problem is, is quite a, a big one in the sense that it's not just uh, the policies of one prime minister, or Netanyahu, or this coalition government, which is very right-wing, but the whole Israeli society has shifted to the right to become more militant, uh, much of it more messianic, <coughs> um, more defensive, um, feeling more vulnerable. The entire society has taken this attitude that only militarism, wars, walls, attacks uh, can uh, save the Jewish people and the Israeli people. And there's uh, huge criticisms now of the Netanyahu government by three or four senior uh, ex-military officials. And the military officials have much more respect, the security officials have much more respect in Israeli society and around the world than the elected politicians do. And it's not just in Israel, but even in the United States and Europe, for instance, we, we have lots of evidence uh, that people don't trust Netanyahu and they think that it's an ir ir irresponsible act to attack Iran. There is an issue in Iran that needs to be resolved, just as there is an issue in Israel in terms of colonization 
colonization that needs to be resolved in occupation. These have to be resolved politically, not through military attack. So this is a big problem, uh, and it'll have to have a political solution. The problem also is that Netanyahu uh, is seen as a slick politician, uh, but the opposition's groups have not provided any clear alternative to him. Kadima and labor represent small groups of people. Nobody else is on the horizon. So this is a real dilemma, not just for Israel and the Jewish people, but for the entire Middle East. Well, what about the, the, the level of the debate? I mean, we're, we're often hearing and we often read in the Israeli media uh, criticism of the situation. Uh, but we also often hear, uh, and particularly from the leading politicians, uh, a narrative that is at best misleading, at worst um, downright, downright dangerous. I mean, for instance, let me just uh, refer you back to what Naftali Bennett was just talking about, the attack on Iraq. Now, I'm sure he's absolutely right that within Israel, people believe that that was somehow a successful mission and widely praised. Outside of Iraq, as we know, everyone knows that all it did was spur Saddam Hussein to actually build, uh, go further to building a nuclear mm -hmm. weapon and made the situation worse. And he would have had one had it not been for the Americans. Is there not a case to be made here that actually the debate within Israel is not actually going anywhere? Well, I think that's probably correct. And the dilemma, as I and others see it, uh, is that the, the Israeli leadership uh, is obsessed, perhaps naturally, uh, with the protection of not just Israel but the Jewish people. But they have exaggerated this uh, to such an extent that they have ventured into the realm almost of the irrational. And when Netanyahu starts talking about the Holocaust when he's looking at Iran, this has gotten so extreme that it has drawn criticisms from Israelis and from Jews in the Western world. The reality is that there are political problems that Israel faces. Zionism has a political conflict with Arabism and now has a political conflict with Iran and maybe with Islamism. These are political problems that need political solutions. Netanyahu is not the kind of man in the eyes of most of the world who has either the rationality or the sense to come to a fair political solution that will allow Israel to exist as a secure, recognized state in its 1967 borders and will allow the Palestinians to have their rights and all the other neighbors uh, to live in peace. That's oh. the ultimate solution that we're all looking for, peace and security for everybody, including uh, a, 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 an Israeli state. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll let Naftali Bennett uh, uh, address those uh, comments about Netanyahu's personal uh, standing and popularity in just a second. First, though, I just want to ask Daniel Ben Simon this idea that Israeli society has gone increasingly further to the right over the past few years is a very common one, and, and a lot of people quote uh, a lot of statistics to back that up. And I guess the composition of the current uh, Israeli cabinet to a certain extent does back that up. Let me just, though, however, uh, pick a, one piece of that uh, that Rami Khoury mentioned there, and that is the idea that this also equates to a fear of Iran, because there was a, a, a survey out only recently from the Brookings Institution, which actually showed very clearly uh, that Israeli public opinion says uh, only 19 percent of the country supports a unilateral strike on Iran. Um, no strike at all. 34 percent are against any strike whatsoever. And 41 percent say that they will only support a strike if America joins in first. The idea that the Israeli population is so far right that they want to attack Iran is not supported, is it? You know, it's very difficult to uh, conduct a poll on any issue, especially the Iranian issue. I've been in the Knesset for three years. We have not discussed the Iranian issue uh, during these three years. So it's not something that the Israelis know exactly what to do and how to do it. So to conduct a poll on to attack or not to attack is almost irresponsible. What I want to say about what Mr. Hori said, Israeli moving to the right, I belong to the Labour Party which is, according to my friend, an uh, insignificant party. But I want to say that, that uh, belonging to the left, I've been following the right wing for the last 30 years. It made more peace with the Arabs than my party. It made peace with Egypt. It, it made uh, uh, agreements with the Palestinians. And it almost made peace with Syria. So many Israelis for the vote for Mr. Netanyahu because they think he has the capacity, he has the legitimacy to strike a deal, not to go to war. When you vote right in Israel, not necessarily because you are against the Palestinians, is because you see the right wing in a larger context. And when Mr. Begin made a deal with Egypt, it was uh, uh, supported by 95% of the Israelis. And the same for many agreements with the Palestinians. So I would say that Mr. Netanyahu, 
uh, can strike a deal with the Palestinians and he will be supported by most Israelis. So left and right do not necessarily reflect the real views on peace. We believe in peace. We have not made peace with the Arabs and I wish we will make more in terms of the Labour Party. So, so we'll have to wait and see. I think that the Israelis have moved to the right after the second intifada. They wanted a strong leader that, like Mr. Sharon and Mr. Netanyahu and now I, now I feel that it's a time for a mellower approach to the peace process and maybe Netanyahu is wasting his time and his words are not doing anything and it seems to me that the Israelis are waking okay. up from three years of paralysis. So let, let, me, let me go back then to, to Naftali Bennett. What uh, do you think Netanyahu's position is right now? As Rami Khouri has said, he seems to be extremely unpopular, not only at home but overseas. Uh, Mr. Ben Simon is talking about uh, his, his feeling that there is a possible shift of opinion. We have an election possibly coming up. Uh, his supporter, Israel Betenu, is uh, now turning against him to a certain extent and saying this coalition looks like it may be over. Are we going to see an election? And if so, uh, is Netanyahu going to win? You know, it's uh, Netanyahu more than anyone else wants an election because of his very uh, solid uh, position in the public. But we have to stick with the facts. The facts are that Iran has tripled the pace of its enrichment of high-grade uranium over the past few months. There's no debate there. They're moving their centrifuges underground. And in the meantime, the world's doing nothing. I'll remind you, of all people, and, and uh, this station, you know, when you read the WikiLeaks, what Saudi Arabia and the Emirates are most afraid of, they don't care about the Palestinian issue. All they care about is telling America, save us from Iran. Well, so this I, is I, not I, an Israeli I, I don't, issue. I don't, I don't, uh, I don't a have, nuclear I don't have Iran time. would be a nuclear Iran would, would be a disaster for the entire region. I don't have and time and to that's argue why I think with you about the facts and the, and the, and the fallacies and stopping this, uh, of this amazing uh, threat. But um, the fact is, we're not here to, to have you repeat so, um, these claims about Iran, many of which, as I say, we can argue about. Uh, I'm not here to ask you just about to open up Benjamin, uh, Wikipedia Benjamin and you can, Netanyahu's Wikileaks position and you can read here it and the elections coming over in Israel. Um, what do you think the situation is if he doesn't get the support of Israel Betenu and doesn't uh, get the support of his security establishment and presumably the other parties in that coalition, which in many ways is a fragile one, begin to smell blood in the water? Mr. Netanyahu is going to do what's right for Israel's future and for the world peace. I'm not uh, his personal advisor anymore. If it means uh, doing what's necessary, he will do it regardless of uh, what uh, some former official said. And I'll tell you right now, he will get overwhelming support from the Israeli public. You can be sure about that. Uh, let me get back then to, to Mr. Ben Simon. I mean, clearly. It seems that the pro-Netanyahu camp is intent on maintaining this fear-mongering and the Iran issue as perhaps being their best chance of having Netanyahu re-elected. Do you think that the, uh, an upcoming election will see uh, Netanyahu in the position he's in? Uh, <clears throat> I'm, I must tell you that, that I have a feeling, uh, a strong feeling, that going on the Iranian issue will not uh, give victory to Netanyahu on the opposite. On the contrary, uh, it will push him to lose. Mr. Netanyahu has sacrificed so many policies in Israel. Instead of being Prime Minister of Israel, he's the Prime Minister of the settlers. And he will pay a price for this, for representing only the settlers and the welfare of the settlers, like Mr. Bennett belongs to this population, and, and neglecting most of the Israelis. He will pay a price, and I'm repeating what I'm saying now. He will not be the next Prime Minister of Israel. Rami Khouri, do you think the international opinion plays into this at all? I mean, we've seen in the United States uh, a determination that uh, an attack on Iran should be put off until such time as a diplomatic approach can be given uh, a chance to succeed. We've heard from many members of the establishment in uh, security and political establishment in the U.S. that they don't think that this is a wise idea. Does any of this have any effect uh, on Israeli politics? You know, it must have an effect. I mean, the, the two other gentlemen, Mr. Bennett and Ben Simon, would know better than me about this, but it, it must have an effect. Isra I think the Israeli public uh, must not be happy 
uh, to hear constant claims by its own prime minister that it is a, perhaps in another Holocaust situation and there's going to be an attack on Iran and the whole region is surrounded by Islamist governments and Israel is alone and the Jewish people are threatened. This must not be a happy moment for people in Israel and Jewish people around the world. And that's why I think people are cautioning the Israeli leadership to think very carefully about a unilateral strike. Everybody I've talked to in the United States, from Harvard professors who specialize in nuclear issues to State Department people to other people who are specialists, everybody says, and many Israelis say, even if you do attack Israel, even if the U.S. and Israel together attack, uh, attack Iran, uh, they will not be able to fully uh, destroy the nuclear uh, industry there. They will set it back a year or two. And everybody agrees that this will only speed up the determination of Iran uh, to redress the, the balance in some, in some way. So there must be an impact on the Israeli leadership. The problem is it's not reflected in electoral politics. It's right. a gross distortion. Well let me take you away then from internal Israeli politics, because as you say, I mean, it's not necessarily uh, your, uh, your field because you're not in Israel. Let me ask you about the field in which you are in, which is, which is uh, relations and politics uh, within the broader Middle East. Now, uh, Mr. Bennett there made the claim that a lot of Israelis uh, politicians uh, on his side continue to make, and that is that uh, the WikiLeaks comments uh, that were attributed to Saudi Arabia are somehow definitive statement of, of the realities of the Middle East. Do you, do you think that's the case? Do you think that Saudi Arabia's um, real existential fear is of Iran, as, as has been portrayed, or is this just uh, more politics and rhetorical positioning because of strategic interests? It's probably a bit of both. There's no question that many Arab leaders are not happy with a nuclear Iran. Uh, but for many Arab leaders, they understand, as Israelis don't seem to understand, that the most destab destabilizing and radicalizing force in the Arab region for the last 60 years has been the Arab-Israeli conflict and the statelessness and occupation and exile of the Palestinian people. A resolution of the Palestine-Israel conflict would be the single greatest uh, uh, mechanism to bring stability and peace to this region. People People want to solve the Arab-Israeli conflict, and a poll that just came out uh, from the Doha Institute, uh, uh, the biggest poll in the Arab world in the last year, uh, surveying 30, 40,000 people across the entire Arab world, showed that the, among ordinary people, the Palestine issue is huge. And if we are looking at polls, as my two Israeli colleagues just referred to polls and popularity, there was huge support for the prisoner exchange deal between the Israeli government and Hamas, where one Israeli soldier was exchanged for many Palestinian prisoners. And there was massive support for that uh, deal in Israel and uh, in the Arab world. So I think this is the way to go. Uh, mm. The Israelis say they want peace, but they don't seem to act as if they're ready to do it. So and I think the real focus should be to get back to a serious peace process that looks at Israeli and Palestinian rights as equal uh, right. and not as and sequential. Inter interestingly enough, even Shimon Peres this week came out and said that a deal with the Palestinians was perfectly doable and there on the table and the only reason it happens and hap hasn't happened, uh, and I quote, is because the prime minister thinks there is another way. So, uh, Naftali Bennett, do, do you think that the Palestinian issue that, uh, that Rami Khoury just brought up, do you think that's an issue at all right now? I mean, do you think in an upcoming election and in the current Israeli climate that this issue is even on the mind? of the Israelis, or is the Iran thing the, the sole focus? The claim that the Palestinian issue is the center of the region is utter nonsense. Uh, we're seeing Egypt falling to radical Islam, either uh, jihad or, or the Salafists. We're seeing Iran uh, gaining hegemony over the region. Uh, frankly, most of the Arabs couldn't care less about the Palestinian-Israeli issue, and it's uh, growing less as an issue, not more. Uh, also, the Israeli public, which you keep on claiming that is becoming messianic or what have you, not at all. They're just looking at reality. Every time that we uh, put okay. forward an amazing deal, what we got in return was 1,600 uh, people killed. So at the Very end of the day, I'll just remind you one last point. One last point. Um, Israel allegedly took out the Syrian nuclear reactor in 2007. I want to ask you guys, what would the situation look like today with Assad having two or three nuclear bombs while uh, killing and annihilating his own, his own people? One so final word. I think one final word. We're out of time. Israel I just want to give a final word. For protecting the region rather than criticizing us. To Daniel Ben Simon, the, the final word then on this. Do you think the Palestinian issue is going to form any part of the next election? 
I don't know, I'm not sure. <clears throat> Israelis are looking into themselves today, the social issues, the economic issue, equality, and the gaps between Israelis. But it remains, as agreed totally with Mr. Khoury, it remains the center of the whole regional conflict. And I, I was so worried when I heard yesterday right. Mr. Disking saying that Netanyahu did absolutely nothing to push this. And the next coalition, I think, will do much more on this track than right. the uh, uh, current uh, administration. We are right out of time. Thank you very much indeed, Daniel Ben Simon in Tel Aviv. Also in Tel Aviv, Naftali Bennett. And in Beirut, thank Rami Khouri. Thank you all very much indeed for talking to us today. And thank you for watching this edition of Inside Story. Please send us your feedback by email at InsideStory at aljazeera.net. And until next time, thanks very much and bye-bye.